welcome back to Taylor Tales. We are here about to enter James chapter 12 round. Let's go. The aftermath of the explosions never got a conclusion. Or at the very least, I'm kept out I kept in the dark about it, which makes sense. I'm not privy to that information. I'm still their prisoner. An uneventful week later, I'm in the infirmary working alongside Phileas. He's not a man of many words, but he does answer any questions I have. Today he's been showing me how to sterilize wounds. You're getting pretty good at this, he compliments me, seeing my work on the patient. Uh, careful! The patient cries out when I nick him medicine to the spot on his wound. Sorry, I apologize quickly. Hold on, hold still, please. I'm so engrossed with my work that time flies by. It's easy to keep busy so that I'm unable to have time to think to myself. A distraction, pretty much. You seem a little less anxious today, remarks Billy as once we're left alone. Did I seem anxious before? Yes, after explosions in the city, he seemed more withdrawn and perhaps a bit numb. How close has he been keeping a watch on me? It is my job to track the health of everyone in the palace, he explains when he sees the look on my oh. face. How is your monthly cycle? he asks out of the blue. I had to explain to Billy as what a menstrual cycle was once he noticed I was cramping. At the very least, he couldn't actually smell any blood. It stopped. I feel a lot better, I reply. At least I was able to wash my reusable period panties. The servants were kind enough to let me use their washing <sighs> facilities. Good, your complexion has gotten better too. You really do sound like a worried doctor. He's so fucking cute. Literally, I'm simping for everyone but the main character, uh, main guy we're supposed to go for. Awkwardly, he reverses his gaze away from me. Is it bothersome? I shake my head. No, it's fine. Thank you for worrying. I will have to note this biological behavior about earthlings, he mutters to himself. Humans. I find myself correcting him. We call ourselves humans. He simply closes his eyes. My mistake. We tend to call each other each race from the planet they're from. How do you how do you know it was called Earth? I ask. We didn't. Your planet is called HX108 to us. I sh believe shortly after entering your atmosphere, Prince James received messages from your planet. Broadcasts. That's the first time I've heard of it. Like videos. Radio waves. Oh, I see. I think they used it to fine-tune the babblefish before engaging. It's why he was able to speak your language right away. He spoke my language too. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Wait, my ears perk up. Billis hasn't shared much private information with me, so it surprises me when I hear him say two. Two, I repeat, I'm curious. I see the jewelry on his arm, the tracker. Lena and I each have one, though she had to get it replaced. I'm starting to suspect combined with Billis' exotic uh, appearance, which is too different from Goat, that he doesn't belong here. Billis realizes what he said and grows quiet. He's not going to volunteer that information, is he? I'll have to ask directly. Billius, why do you have to wear a tracker? Billius quietly starts cleaning up the infirmary, putting away used bandages and bottles. He does this for a while, long enough for me to think that I think I won't be getting an answer out of him anytime soon. But then he speaks up. My planet was called Grinya, he says softly, peaceful. We were all pacifists. A lot of us were capable of healing the sick and wounded. I'm noticing the lack of present tense when he's describing his people. Grenya was full of water, a prime target for Lord Veritas' army. I can see where this is going. He took over the planet, didn't he? Belize hesitates for a second. There's a sorrowful expression in his eyes. Prince James lived the attack. I can feel it hit this huge lump form in my throat. It's hard to swallow. I can see why the two of you don't get along now, I say, thinking back to the time Belize has been disagreeable with James. Intrigued by my ability to heal the others, he took me with him. A grim shadow washes over him. The rest weren't so for fortunate. I end up gasping. It's just like my story, except this time James succeeded. Is this what would happen if he, if he didn't get stopped? Attacking a peaceful planet full of people who didn't want to fight. Uh, I'm glad nothing happened to you. <laughs> Thank you. Though sometimes I wish it could have gone differently, he admits. Yes, I can imagine. You must have lost a lot. I do hope your planet doesn't meet the same fate as mine. Well, I certainly won't let them get away with it, with it that easily, I say with a brave face. I have faith you will succeed in that mission, he says, his eyes softening. It has been all bad, though. In this darkness, you find yourself getting support from the ones you least suspect. The doors to the infirmary bust open. Oh. Bill! Lena announces out loudly. Billius jumps up straight, his face su suddenly sporting a rosy color, like he's been caught sharing a secret. P Princess Lena! He squeaks in a high voice. Hello, good day, I greet her with a smile. Oh, you're here too. How's my outfit coming along? She asks eagerly. It should be finished by tonight. I've been working on it every night now. In fact, it's taking me so long because I don't have a sewing machine, nor do I even have any sort of needle thread to use. I've just been using my own thread and hand stitching it. Not to mention, I've been asking anyone to give me any spare jewelry they have lying around. Most of them came from Lena herself. Oh. Great, and I don't and don't worry, Belle. You'll be the first to see me in my new attire. She gives him a seductive smile. 
Willis ends up awkwardly coughing into his hand, blushing slightly. I think he likes her. That's kind of adorable. But the ramifications ring eerily in the back of my mind. Liking the sister of the man who kidnapped you conquered and conquered your planet. Actually, something still doesn't add up. Princess Lena, I ask, getting her attention. Hmm. Why do you have to wear that? I point at the new tracker in her arm. Lena floats her hair over her shoulder, then taps a large gem with her finger. Mm. Don't you think it kind of clashes with my skin tone? She asks, feigning innocence. Captain Caleb said it's because you like to run off. What does that mean? Are you also... <laughs> so many questions, princess. Is she always like this? She asks, turning her attention to Bilius. I cannot fault her curiosity. She's in an unfamiliar place filled with strangers. Oh. Well, let's not talk about a boring piece of jewelry like this. Instead, let's get back to your work. I'm impatient to see your results. I sigh, realizing I'm not getting an answer, going to get an answer out of her. Elena does as she pleases. If you come to my room tonight, you'll be able to fit it, I say. That sounds great. Bill, want to join? Pardon me? He stutters. I believe a man visiting a woman's room late at night is overstep. You and your arch... arch... archaic... arch... whatever norms. We're not asking you to bet her. Just come and join our party. Completely harmless. Yes, I would like you to come as well, I encourage him. It's nice to have people around to talk to. I get really bored and lonely in my room. Then it's decided, Lena explains, exclaims. Billy is simply sighs in defeat. <laughs> well, at least it's not like we're stripping in front of Billy and stuff, you know? <laughs> Lena and I have prepared my final stitches, making sure I've got everything nice and polished. While originally I simply wanted to make more underwear for myself, I ended up creating an entire dress for Lena. Well, a two-piece anyway. I try to incorporate the planet's own fashion style and mix it with my personal touch. I couldn't really make her anything modern that people will wear on Earth, as that would really stand out. Imagine a business suit on Lena. Instead, I went for a more belly dancer-inspired outfit, lavishly decorated with golden jewelry. Soon, the both of them arrive in my room. Oh. Now let's see what you created for me, says Lena with a giant glint in her eyes. Belia stands to the side, seemingly a little out of place. I show Lena the two-piece, to which she immediately starts disrobing herself. P Princess Lena! Belia shrieks as he turns around. Oh. Why are you so easily frightened? There's an air of confidence around her words. You should take your chance when it's pre presented to you, Billy. <laughs> she is so fucking bold. <clears throat> Let us know when you're decent, he mutters. I help Lena get into her clothes, feeling a bit like I'm a servant at this point. Her top slides off her rich bronze skin, revealing the massive scar on her back. I almost audibly gasp when I see it, a slash right going right through the middle of her spine. She tilts her head, noticing I've stopped my movements. Like what you see, she hums. I rub my eyes. It's improper to stare at scars. Putting it in the back of my mind, I continue helping her dress. My measurements seem to have been fine, despite having to do everything manually and creating my own measuring tape. It's a little saggy at her chest, so I qu quickly put in a few extra stitches to help stay put. There, now it's perfect. Uh -huh. Ooh, I made this? No fucking way. It's gorgeous. What the fuck? What the? It's certainly peculiar to see you stitch, she says. Finding my ability fascinating. You look gorgeous. I can't See? My girl knew. She looks gorgeous. I compliment her because she really does look fantastic in her new outfit. So this is earth fashion. She muses as she rubs her hands along the fabric, touching the jewelry with her fingertips. Well, it's not earth fashion exactly, but Lena doesn't need to know that. Can you believe it? She made it with the fabric from that little stall at the market. It must have been cheap, yet it feels so right, she says to Bilius. Oh. Bilius, doesn't that look magnificent? She asks, twirling in front of him, the gold shimmering in the light. Dude, he, he must be like, holy fuck. <laughs> he has to be, because he likes her. Because, good, good lord, she's so pretty. Williams turns around, having his back face to us the entire time, and takes Lena's new look yeah. in. Yes, magnificent, he repeats. You like it, I ask, finding myself glowing her positive mm. reaction. It's very agreeable on me, splendid. Finally, no more stuffy clothes. I'll be the star of the Maka for sure. That's good to oh. hear. Do all princesses on earth sew their own clothes? Lena questions me. I knew this would come back to haunt me. Just me, I clarify. It's a hobby, more like my entire life work. Oh. You're very talented if it's just a hobby. I giggle nervously. All of a sudden, a soldier bursts into my room. The three of us jump in surprise. Uh. This is a checkup, he yells at us. Uh. Have you seen the young Prince Nornis anywhere? I see a bunch of other soldiers outside running around. When the soldier finally notices that Lena is in the room as well, he promptly clams up and straight up, straight, stands up straight. He bows politely. Oh. Princess Lena, he says in a much softer yeah. tone. There's no prince here, Lena answers in a bored yeah. tone. Now you're bothering us, please leave. Princess Lena, of course, the soldier respectfully bows and retreats. It's surprising how his tone suddenly switched when he saw Lena was in the room with us. She seems to earn a lot of respect among the soldiers. 
Lena sighs loudly. I guess our party's over. This, the place is buzzing with soldiers. It sounds like they're looking for Prince Norinus. Is he missing? I ask, a little concerned. What if rebels have gotten inside and kidnapped him for huh. something? Unlikely. He's probably just hiding around in his garden. The little prince can be quite mischievous. I agree with Princess Lena. He's most likely in the palace still. No need to worry. The palace is heavily fortified. No one will be able to take the young prince. Everyone seems to be casual about it. Even when the, those explosions went off in the city. However, I never told... Uh, I was was never told about the aftermath. I'm kept in the dark and it bothers me more than it oh. should. We should let you get some rest. Bill and I have something to discuss. Billis looks at her as like he has no idea what she's talking about. We do, he asks. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's for sure, she purrs. <laughs> Billis clears his throat, his cyan eyes avoiding Lena as much as possible. Oh. You're a wonderful tailor, Princess Michiko. I bid you good night, he says. Yes, please rest well, I say and bow my head oh. towards him. Thank you so much for my new attire. I am smitten with it. Lena flashes a brilliant smile at me. She ends up pushing Billy out of my room, finally leaving me alone. I sit down on the on my bed and release a sigh. Their flirting is a little heavy-handed at times. Oh, I noticed Lena forgot to bring her old clothes with her. They're still on the floor. I quickly gather them up. Perhaps I'll give it back to her next time. I walk towards a wardrobe on the far side of the room and open it up. Unexpectedly out rolls a person, limbs flailing everywhere. I let out one of the highest and girly screens of my life. Uh, what, Nornis, what are you doing in my room? He screams to return, started at being found. Prince Nornis, I cry, finally getting my wits back. I thought my heart would stop. The prince picks himself up from the floor. He looks a little dis disheveled, disheveled. Since he fell out my wardrobe just now. Wait, was he hiding in there? What are you? Please be quiet. They'll find me. In fact, not a moment later and my door slides open. I whirl around to see Billy's at the door having run the way back. I heard a shriek. Is everything all right? He asks out of breath. Oh, Billy is. Uh, how am I supposed to fall in love with James when there's so many other good contenders out here? I look behind me, but Nornis is missing. It seems he instantly withdrew back into the wardrobe like a ninja. Lena was right. He is mischievous and even a little devious. I laugh tensely. What do I do now? Should I out him? I stub my toe, I say, and point towards the wardrobe, and I really hurt, I lie. Billy has leaves a sigh. I thought something might have happened to you. Sorry, I'm just very clumsy. Please be careful now, he says and pals out. Well, he was worried about... How am I supposed to love these other... <laughs> I groan out loud once I hear his footsteps disappear. Then I hear a tiny voice from inside the wardrobe. Is he gone? You can come out now, I say exasperately. Prince Nornis pushes open the wardrobe and climbs out. He sheepishly gives me a smile as he shuffles on his feet. What are you doing here? I ask perplexed. He stammers awkwardly. Hiding? <laughs> I realize that, but why? He pushes his fingers together, refusing to speak. Were you... were you spying on me? I decide to ask. Did you see Princess Lena strip? <gasps> no, he shrieks. I looked away. Um, I didn't realize this was your room, Princess. In fact, I feel awful for, for barging in. He suddenly bows deeply in front of me. But when I heard your voices, I couldn't reveal myself anymore. I'm so sorry for treading on your private chambers. He seems so apologetic. It's hard to be stern with him for hiding in my room, especially since he's also a prince. It's all right. But really, what are you doing here, Prince Nornis? He lets out a tiny sigh. I may have tried to explore your areas and forbidden to visit. His pale cheeks turn a shade of pink with his next sentence. Uh. I admit I also wanted to find you. Prince, how old are you? Me, I repeat, surprised. Why me? Uh. You are really nice to me when we met, he says nervously. Mm. You're the only person to have seen my garden. It was a pleasant experience to share it with someone. There's a sense of longing in his voice. He seems happy to talk about the garden. Yeah. I simply wanted to invite you back, he mumbles shyly. Nornis has such an innocent demeanor that my heart positively melts for him. He wanted to invite me to his garden. That's really sweet. He is sweet. He's too sweet. Get out of here. <laughs> but does your brother, um, Lord Veritas, not want anyone in the garden? In general, I'm simply not allowed to have much contact with anyone in the palace. If I, if he knew I was here, he'd be livid. As for the very sheltered life he has, it's almost tragic. A prince locked up in a palace. I may be locked up as well, but at the very least, I've interacted with quite a few people around here, so I don't go mad with loneliness. I can't fault him for wanting to reach out to someone. I gave him, I give him a gentle smile. Well, it'll be our secret then. Nornis's eyes light up, lit up in response, and he shows me a beaming smile in return. I knew you'd understand. Calm down. Please don't alert the guards outside. <laughs> Right, actually, I must be taking my leave. I, I didn't mean to intrude at all. So are you going to invite me to your garden, I asked, gently fishing for an invitation. Oh, oh Princess Machiko, would you, would you like to come by the garden again? I'd be happy to, I answered with a smile. He's so cute. He's so adorable. 
Happy that I accepted, Nornis starts grinning widely. It's almost infectious. He's super cute. A stark contrast to what I've seen of Veritas. I almost can't believe those two are related. Um. I'm there every single day, so um, I'll be waiting, he says shyly. Then he runs off towards the door. Bye, he says in a cheeky manner before slipping away. So cute! I feel like we're in a reverse harem right now. With a bunch of, with all these candidates here that obviously we can't even go for. <laughs> I shake my head at him with a smile. Guess I'll be breaking a few more rules. No, oh, don't tell Caleb. He likes to follow his rules. I haven't had the chance to visit Norinus yet. Simply put, I've been too busy to. There's a lot of work to be done in the infirmary. But this has me set on collecting blood from the soldiers. For, for what reason, I know not. But it's quite tiring. At the end of the day, I simply want to crawl back into my bed. As I round the corner, my nose bumps into a firm chest. Ow, I yelp and stumble backwards. Captain James. Ugh. <laughs> I should be happy to see this man, but I'm not. James clicks his tongue at me when I notice he's holding the tracking device in his hands. He hurriedly puts it away in his pouch. Wait, were you tracking me just now? Genius ob observation made there, princess. What else kind of purpose does a tracking device have? Stingy, he seems to be in a bad mood. I'm not breaking any rules, I say slowly. I'm allowed to run around once the work is done at the infirmary. All in all, I should be thankful that I retain some sort of autonomy. That's not at all what I thought would be in case when he kidnapped me. I thought I'd be thrown in a dungeon, chained to a wall, being fed scraps of food, maybe abused, tortured, or raped, who knows. Reality has ha has been a lot more forgiving than my fantasies. Not to say I'm enjoying my time here, but it's better than what I had prepared myself for. Uh. I didn't say you were, he says, slightly shaking his head. I was looking for you. Why? Are you? Are we going back to Earth? I asked, hopeful. Mm. Tomorrow is the Maka Festival, he explains, ignoring my question. Right, Princess Lena told me she'd be leading it. Well, she's requested your presence, he says gruffly. It seems he didn't quite agree with her sentiments. She did. Then I'm not going to refuse. You can't refuse either way, James points out. At least to entertain me with the illusion that you're asking instead of demanding, I reply bitterly. He crosses his arms, a giant gl a giant, a gl not giant, why do I keep saying giant? A glint of a glare in his brown eyes. Do I look like an entertainer to you? He flexes his biceps as if to prove a point that he is indeed a captain and not an entertainer. This man, it had only been a day since I found out he conquered Billius' home planet and took him away as well. I should be afraid of him, disgusted even. Yet there he stands, arm crossed, trying to flex his muscles at me. Of all the things he could do to intimidate me, this is what he's going with? It comes across as so... Inno innocuous and benign it's almost silly i end up snorting out loud at how funny he looks not expecting me to laugh james stands there his posture turning awkward he peeved at my reaction are you mocking me he asked incredulously yes i'm laughing at you i like how i'm nice to everyone in the choices but when, when james comes up nah feisty all the time Yes, I'm laughing at you, I said chuckling lately. I guess you can be an entertainer. For a split moment in time, blink and you miss it. James' face comes undone, mouth open, eyebrows furled together in confusion, and a flash of emotion in his eyes. Something other than anger or annoyance. And just as fast, he's back at Skelly at me, bearing his fangs. You will not mock me in this way, he has clearly offended. Perhaps I should take away your dinner for tonight. Maybe that will remind you of your place. My mouth drops open. The situation stopped being funny. You wouldn't. I narrow my eyes at him. A confident smirk. He's got me there. What was that before? You acted like it was the end of the universe simply because you haven't had your provisions yet that day. I pursed my lips at him. I've been working all day at the infirmary. I'm hungry as can be. No way I could sleep on an empty stomach. That's cruel. Is all I end up saying. Then stop turning me into a mockery. You're doing a fine job of that yourself, I mutter. Why would my girl talk some more trash? James glares at me and all of a sudden he thrusts something into my hand. I had a random sharp pain in my throat. Like right here? It's still there. I just tried to like chug a bunch of water, so hopefully I'm okay. <laughs> Take this. I'm confused by what I'm holding in the palm of my hand. A small woven ornament seems made out of twigs resembling a star or a sun maybe. There's a red ribbon dangling at one of the ends. What is it? Am I supposed to tie this somewhere? To tie this up somewhere? Is it like a charm? Ask someone else. Bring it with you tomorrow night, he grumbles. What? You don't know what it is either? <laughs> then without another word, James flies off the balcony. I'm left staring at the small ornament. This chapter is pretty long. 
Usually it would cut off by now and then I could just like chug some more water and then record again. The festival could be heard from very, a very long distance away. I'm sure the drums are pretty overwhelming. It's being held right in front of the main gate. They've erected a huge bonfire in the middle. Tons of goat are dancing around it. I don't even know if it's goat or gout. My bad if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I stand on the side away from the fire. The smell of burning wood sickens me. It's okay. It's just a bonfire. Part of the festival or whatever. No need to go into panic mode. You can do this. Just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath to calm myself down. The atmosphere is lively and bold. The gates have been open to the common folk, it seems. As the air is crowded with those that aren't servants or soldiers. It's hard to not swept... Uh, excuse me. Hard to not get swept up in the rhythm. For a brief moment, it doesn't feel like I'm a prisoner, just a woman enjoying a really cool festival. There's a friendly tap on my shoulder. Princess Eok. Uh, Princess Eok. Princess Rajiko. <laughs> it's Eok that greets me. Eok is like the best funny goofy friend you can have. I turn to face Eok with a smile. Hey! Happy to see Princess make it. Maka Festival happen every 20 noon noon. Noon noon? Is that like a lot? Eok, how long is a noon noon? I, actu I don't actually know. Eok starts counting on his fingers deep in thought. Eok, think 19 days. Oh, that is less than a month. Makes sense. They have their own orbit around the sun and with their, with their own way of marki marking time. I've been thankful that a day is very similar to Earth at the very least. Also, could you tell me what this is? Captain James, J J James gave it to me. But I don't know what to do with it, I ask, and then show him the ornament. Eok ends up smiling, showcasing his own that's tied to his wrist. Ah, so that's what it is. Do I just wear it? Huh. Everyone get it! At end, you tie to someone respectful. Do you tie this around someone's wrist? Huh. Yes, yes, left wrist, left one, right. You, left, not you. <laughs> then he points at a soldier surrounded by plenty of others. He's got a bunch of those ornaments tied around his wrist. Huh. Some start early. I giggle, I guess he must be popular. Yoke helps me tie the ornament to my right wrist. Ah, Princess Michiko, you came. I hear someone call my name. Oh, Caleb. Hi. <laughs> Sipping for the brother more than the main. It's Caleb. He's got his own ornament tied around his right, ri right wrist. So does everyone just like have it on their wrist at the beginning? And then like you could start tying it to other people's right, right, right? Right, Yoke? Oh, 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 oh. I put it on my right wrist, and when I give it away, I put it on their left wrist. Okay. <laughs> Let's hope I remember that. Not like this event actually happens, does it? <laughs> Princess Lena invited me. I'm not quite sure what the celebration is for, though. The people of Yule celebrate their culture every once every 20 new noons. It's a sign of peace and belonging. I bite my tongue. They're not exactly peaceful if they go around conquering planets. But mostly, it's to strengthen the relationships between everyone. Everyone has to give their... Mo mo mokoet to someone worthy. Otherwise, they themselves are not worthy be to be called a goat. Oh. Captain Caleb knows a lot, says Eo, impressed. What do you take me for? I practically have been raised here. I point out the ornament on my wrist. Is this the Mako? Mm. Affirmative. He leans in closer to me with a smirk. Best be sure you give that away to someone at the end of the dance. Do you already know who you're giving yours to? I ask, curious. He closes his eyes with a satisfied <laughs> smile. That I do. Lord Veritas may accept mine. Uh. Lord Barrett has not, arrived, not yet arrived, Eok hmm. points out. Perhaps I should investigate. I have matters to attend to. Please enjoy the festival, you two. Caleb bows and then leaves us alone. Ah. Eok must leave too. Eok began dancing. He gives me an apologetic look. Oh, do I get to see you dance? That's so exciting. Um. He shyly looks away. Yes, um, Eok not very good. I'm sure you'll do fine. I can't wait to see you dance. He's so cute! In his reptilian way. <laughs> He flashes me an adorable grin and then slinks away into the crowd. My feet take me to one of the benches scattered around the site. I sit on the furthest away from the fire. I look around my surroundings and see people happily engaging in conversation or practicing their dance moves. Sometimes I see them exchange their mocha, mo mocha. Some of them are eating at the food stalls. I see even children running around. I tap my foot along with the music. I admit this is actually kind of fun. I can't wait to see Eok and Lena dance. I wonder if Nornis will attend. Princess. That voice, that all familiar tone, it sucks all the fun right out of my body. <laughs> Captain James, I reply exasperately. Wait, are you okay? I'll about to say, are you wearing your thingy thing? Since you didn't forget to bring the mocha with you, smart. I don't have the memory of a goldfish, you know. He raises an eyebrow as he sits down next to me. Goldfish. 
He repeats in a strange accent. Oh, I say, realizing my mistake, I shake my head, forget it. James then directs his attention on the bonfire, surveying the festival in silence. I manage to glance over on his wrist. He's still got his book at. Who is he giving it to? Going to give it to? Would he be just like Caleb and give it to Veritas? Or perhaps someone else he thinks is strong? Princess, I can feel your eyes burning a hole in my arm without having to look. <laughs> Embarrassed, he caught me staring. I quickly glare at the, uh, quickly look, not glare, not, we're not glaring at the children. Look at the dancing children ahead of us, but I'm itching to know. Yuck, explain to me what they're for. Who are you planning on giving it to? I ask as nonchalant as possible, like I couldn't care less if he answers me or not. But please do answer me. <laughs> James remains stoic as ever, doesn't budge an inch. In fact, he doesn't even blink for the longest time. Yep, he's not going to answer me. I sigh and lean my elbows onto my knees, pinning, putting my chin into the palm of my hand. Why did he have to sit next to me of all people? My sister. He suddenly starts and jolts my attention. Every festival, Lena gets my mocat. Oh, that's kind of cute. That's actually really adorable. I didn't expect that out of you. I thought you would just, like, swap it from your right to your left. Can you give it to yourself? How sentimental of him. I was sure he'd pick something so much strong. What with his only the strong survive speech the other day. I guess he does seem to care for his siblings a lot. I miss Rice so bad right now. He'd be out there dancing himself silly. That is true. My brother would do that. Making finger guns moving in the sky as he shoots out fake laser beams. Now I'm getting sentimental. How many will Ket does that make so far? I ask, wondering how many festivals they've attended. The corner of his mouth curls up slightly. I can't tell whether it's a smile or a smirk. Too many to count. For a split moment, I wonder how old James is. I've always had him pegged around my age, but who knows what the reality is. Besides, their calendar system will be equal to mine. From the corner of my eye, I spy vivid red hair. I almost want to cry out and hug Kane until I realize it's bilious. Ugh. A treacherous similar hair color of his. Everything is reminding me of home right now. Hello, Billius. I greet him politely. Mm. Hello, Billius. You got... Okay. Me checking everybody if they got the thingy. He, okay. he takes a seat next to me. I hope you've been enjoying the Maka Festival so far. Billius then notices James. They both stare at each other. Sparks go flying. Hello, Billius, says James in a cool voice. Prince James? Billius greets him back. Talk about awkward. So, um, have either of you seen Prin Princess Lena? I believe she said she was leading the dance, no? I start to talk, hoping to release some of the tension. She'll be here soon. I he last I heard, she was getting ready to wear your outfit. James joins in the conversation, despite clearly not wanting to discuss anything with us. Your outfit, he asks. Remember the fabric we got in the city? I made something with them for Princess Lena. He gives me this cold and disapproving stare. Bitch, what? It's not like I made it for you, so why are you mad? <laughs> Those scraps of cloth. Yes, those scraps of cloth, sir. Don't judge that. Judge the cloth. Why is there? Why is there anything wrong with them? I end up pouting. I better not have made a mockery out of her. He huffs. Princess Lena looks respectful. No one would dare to mock her. I think Princess Machiko did a terrific job. Well, thank you, Billius. My eyes are sparkling at his compliment. Then I see a horde of guards in the corner of my eyes. They are escorting Veritas to his seat. Front row, of course, away from everyone else. He seems so emotionless and cold as always. I don't spot Nornis anywhere, though. Hey, is Princess Nornis attending? I ask Billius. He shakes his head. He's never allowed to attend. Oh, that's so sad. Even I'm here to enjoy the night. As am I. So please shut up your mouth hole to <laughs> let me watch in silence. James, you can get your ass and sit somewhere else on a different bench. Actually. If the sound of my voice irritates you, you're free to leave, I su suggest snarkily. <laughs> uh, this enemies and lovers is not ever turning to lovers at this point. James grits his teeth at me, sounding out a low growl. I might just do exactly that. I'm in agreement with the princess, says Billy is hiding his own smirk. I didn't ask for your opinion. James snaps at me, at uh, snaps at him as he gets up from his seat. The drum, the drums blast throughout the palace, silencing anyone, even James, who sits back down. Oh, guess we're, we're not losing him. The dance, the dance is about to start. I run takes a seat on the wooden stand, shuffling away from the bonfire. The drum grows louder and more intense. Then a long line of dancers appear, walking down the grand staircase. Oh, Eok is among them. 
I can see him behind a bunch of others. He seems very focused, an expression I haven't seen on him so far. The girl move in tune with their drums, smacking their thighs, planting their feet aggressively on each step. They hit their chest, all in sync with each other. I see male and female alike. Everyone is wearing different outfits. There's no central uniform. Then, as each dancer stands on a step, they split in half like they're parting the Red Sea. At the very top of the stairs is an unmistakably Lena, who descends down each step like a goddess she is. She's dancing, throwing up her hands in the air with each beat, stamping her foot, st stamping on her foot every step. It's a very powerful movement. I'm entranced. Don't you think she looks beautiful, Billy? Yes, I asked, thinking she looks like she, she's completely in her element. Billy seems to be a loss for words. He's unable to take his eyes off of her. That's my sister you're talking here. I'm talking about here. James grunts, irritated. Eventually, everyone makes it off the stairs and they form a circle around the bonfire, dancing, counting, slapping. Then they begin to sing loud words, expressive vocals. Some of them aren't even words. We are here. We are here. The chant as they stamp their feet onto the ground, united and strong. We hear. We hear your plight. Lena is the one. Is the one doing her own dance moves. Her loud. Her voice loud and clear, carrying herself above everyone else. Strong together, never alone. For one of many, this is our song. Then people in the audience throw them spears. Each of the dancers catches one, and they all slam them on the ground, making as much ruckus as possible. I bet this is so cool! And two of the drums, they use their spear like an, like an instrument, twirling, throwing, then tapping it against the floor. Eok, I can't believe it. Looks graceful in his movements, strong and confident even. For being a great, he sure knows how to stay in sync with the rest and ex expertly hand handles his sphere. It's like an extension of his body. My heart is pounding and being dragged into the rhythm of their dance. It's so raw, so emotional. We are here, we are here, they roar. Lena is the star of the show, weaving in between the dancers, jumping, sliding, trading spears with one another. She dances with them, a short twirl and linking of the arms before moving on to the next one. Her hair is constantly in motion. She never stops to take a break. The drums are so powerful, it's hard not to get sucked in with the crowd who joins them in their song. Stomp, stomp, tap. That's the rhythm the crowd goes along with. Stand together, Lena shouts, pointing her spear at the audience. Bro, she is so gorgeous. Like, so gorgeous. Huh. The crowd responds, beating their chest. We hear you. Uh. Goat, live on. The crowd goes absolutely wild. Everyone is standing, pounding their chest, arms, legs, whatever they can get their hands on. It's so easy to get pulled along with, their, with all their energy. I want to stomp and pound, too. Uh. Together we are one, she shouts in one final breath. The dancers all jump in the air, landing in perfect synchronization on the ground to deliver a powerful bang that ricochets against the palace uh. skate. They're screaming now, cheering. If you hear Arya growling, she is fucking up her toy right now. Can you even see her in the background? Not really. <laughs> the dancers all bow until their arms are stretched out and face, faces pointed to the crowd. Lena is breathing hard, as are the uh, as are the rest of the performers. The dance is finished. It's Billius who stands up first, joining in with the rest of them. He pounds his chest and grunts out the same chant. The crowd repeats the same phrase over and over. This is their way of applauding. I want to honor their impeccable performance as well, so I stand up. Absolutely enthralled with their act, I beat my own chest no matter how painful it might be. I shout mimic in the rest of the crowd. James gives me one sideways glance until he until he too unfolds his arm and stands up from his seat. I can hear him slam his fist into his rock hard pecs. He loudly yells out the chant, same as everyone else. At this moment in time, I'm not a prisoner. I'm not an earthling. Neither is Billius nor James. The crowd has become one, like a magical spell has been cast upon all of us. It feels like we are all go. With one obvious exception, I could tell through the pounding and cheering that there is exactly one person who hasn't joined in, Veritas. Bored and still, he remains in his seat, unmoving. I'm almost perplexed he hasn't risen to applaud. It's like the spirit of the festival has left him completely cold. The dancers rise from the ground and people from the audience walk over to them, showering them with compliments. They start to exchange their moquette. The applause begins to die down. She did amazing, didn't she? I say, directing my attention to James. He's got this sentimental look on his face. It's almost so almost softens his mm. appearance. Yes, that she did. He agrees with me, bro. You know when you're not angry and yelling at me and being rude as fuck, you do look cute. At times. James gets up from his seat and walks over to Lena, who is receiving quite a lot of ornaments from supposed fans. He too gives his moquette to her. I can spy a tiny smile on his face as he ties it to her wrist. He's proud of her. That much I can tell. Billy, it's now's your chance. You can give yours to Lena too, I say, turning to face the redhead. I'm surprised to find him already removing his moquette. No, I don't think I will. He says softly and gently. <gasps> <laughs> I have ascended! And on. <laughs> Billy is, please! Billy is.
Yes, please. And honor your strength and pers perseverance in the face of adversity. Please accept my call. Okay. Oh my god. I thought you liked her. Don't you like her? Please tell me you like her. I cannot fall for you. You're not. You're not an option. He ties it on my left wrist. Not too tight and not too loose. I already experienced a high from the performance. A rush of emotion surged through me. Coloring my cheeks with a red complexion. I didn't expect this at all. Thank you so much. I managed to express my gratitude. He gives it to gives me the softest smile. <laughs> Bro, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I'm falling for someone I can't have. <laughs> His eyes twinkly. I can't help but copy him and mirror his smile. Oh. Bill! Lena sh shrieks as she comes over, disrupting her uh. conversation. What do you think of my dance? She asks excitedly, wiping away some sweat from her brow. Her entire left arm has more kept tied around it. She's popular. Absolutely breathtaking. Okay, he still loves her. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You are the best. Please take this, she says, pinching his cheeks. She ties her moquette around his left wrist. Aww, he got one! I don't know what I expected, but I'm so impressed with your dance, Princess Lena. I compliment her. Oh, wait, her arm does have a lot. I'll keep the compliments coming, she says with a chuckle. In the background, I see James and Caleb talking amongst themselves. Both of them have given away their own, but only James has gotten some in return. Then I spy Eok, who's collecting the forgotten spears on the ground. He hasn't received moquette from anyone yet. Who should I give my moquette to? <gasps> I get a choice! Oh my god, uh... <laughs> I get a choice! I wanted to give mine to Caleb, but Eok hasn't gotten anything. Eok hasn't gotten anything. Fuck James. Lena, she already a shit ton. I didn't know... Uh, fuck. I, uh, originally in my mind, I was like, dead ass, I want to give it to Caleb. But now I want to give it to Billius too. But, but, the one who has been with us... The longest. Eok. I grin to myself as I shoot my hand up in the air. Of course, Eok gets my moquette. Eok! I call out for him as I rush over. Ah. Start Eok ends up dropping some of the spears to the ground when he hears my voice. Princess, he says nervously as he bends down to pick them up again. I'm so impressed with Eok, I gush about him. He presses the spears against his chest. Ah. Impressed with Eok, he asks, baffled. Yes, I saw the way you moved. I don't know. I've never seen you act so serious and focused before. It was like you were a different person entirely. <laughs> Eok grows the back of his head, laughing nervously. <laughs> now I realize that princess kept watch on Eok. How could I not? You looked really amazing up there, especially the way you handled that spear. Good job. Eok's forehead ends up turning a more vibrant red. He's clear and embarrassed. It's rather cute. Thank you, princess. And that's why, here, I want you to have it. I say as I remove the moquette from my wrist. His eyes turn large when I grab his hand. For sticking up for me and helping me whenever. Please accept my mocha. I say with a smile. Huh? For Eok. <laughs> of course, Eok. You're the best. <laughs> You're the best. Floor and I would ever decide on giving it to him. Of course. Mm. Well, respectfully, he lightly bows his head and closes his eyes, allowing me to tie the mocha to his left wrist. Grinning all the while, Eok deserves it in my opinion. I neatly tie it up to, to make sure it won't fall. He keeps staring at it with his golden eyes like he's in shock. He's so cute. No, He probably didn't expect to get one because, you know, he's a grunt. <laughs> My first. He gasps astonished. Oh, it's his first one? It's a little disheartening to hear him say that this is his first as I'm about to pull away. Yell grabs my hand. <clears throat> Wait, he says. His voice doesn't sound as shrill as <sighs> usual. Princess Michiko's pure hearted. He starts to remove his own moquette. He wraps the ribbon around my left wrist. <laughs> Even to a grunt like me, he says with a tiny smile. Of course, Eok. Literally, you have been there since day one of my kidnapping. So, you know. <laughs> the other hotties are hotties. You know, but if I had to pick between the two of them, fuck that. I ended up picking my friend. <laughs> he ties it off and releases me. Oh, he gave me one back. Well, gave one back to me. This makes me feel all fuzzy inside. Then sometimes something dawns on me as a speech pad about his speech pad. Huh? Me, I repeat. I thought you always referred to yourself as Eok. Huh? Did he? I don't see anywhere that he mentioned that. Realizing what he said, he starts to panic a little. Eok's speech not always bad, just a bit clumsy, not stupid, he smutters. I don't think you're stupid, Eok. Thank you for the moquette. You're probably the first friend I made over here. Huh? Friend, he echoes my words. Yes, my friend. Aww, he says, grinning widely. <laughs> hey, friend! 
Welcome to the festival come soon, and I'm feeling energized. I'm actually quite happy. I received two moquette, which feels special. I can't believe Bill Billius gave us one. I didn't return one to him, obviously, because you know, if I had to choose between him and Caleb, don't don't make me. I, <laughs> I chose you. Okay. One thing that jumped out to me is that Veritas was the only person there who didn't give away his own. He didn't accept any either, so people were resorting to placing them on the ground in front of him, like an offering. Why join the festival if you weren't going to participate? I'm ready to head back to my room and sleep. The festival is fun, but also very emotion draining and exhausting. A lot of people have already left, so it would be strange if I left too, right? It wouldn't be strange. Even Lena's making her quick getaway. Oh, she dropped one of the moquette around her wrist. Princess Lena shout out to her, but the crowd is still lively and she doesn't quite hear me. Unbeknownst to my yelling, Lena quickly retreats towards the side of the castle gates. I walk up to, to the forgotten moquette on the ground and pick it up. Someone wanted her to have this, so it, would be disrespectful, so it would be respectful to give it back to her. I end up following her, seeing her disappear into one of the doors. Should I be following her? Princess Lena? I ask, seeing nothing but an empty hallway. No, wait, there she is, at the very end. Damn, she's fast. I'm about to yell at her when I see her pull down on a torch like lever. The wall suddenly opens in front of her. She quickly goes through the opening. I'm left perplexed and wide awake. Is that a secret entrance? Before I know it, the whole class closed up. My spider boy, spider boy senses are tingling. Time to investigate. I walk towards the end of the hallway and study the lit torch on the wall. She simply pulled on it. Let me try. The torch easily pulls down and I can hear a mechanism lock unlock on the inside of the wall. The stones disappear into the wall, revealing an opening to the outside. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Where are you going? Aren't you tracked? I don't know. Anyway, that was a very long episode. Um, it's about 40 minutes long. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful. I cannot believe Bill gave us his moquette. That is so fucking cute. I didn't even know you had an option to pick who you had to give it to. Um, but I hope you guys aren't mad that I gave mine to Eok. If you wanted to give it to, you, to somebody else, you're, this game is free, so you can definitely play it. But thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.